Hello, are you there? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Monday, 12 o'clock. Well, I think according to the computer here, it's 12.01, which means I'm one minute late. I suffer APP. It's an illness. I have an illness called APP, which is acute pathological punctuality. And so I'm here one minute late, but according to my watch, no, my watch says perfect. 12 o'clock. Can you see it? 12 o'clock. So, uh, I'm here to teach you English and I'm also to here to answer your questions. So I'm going to um, show you some pictures. Right now, just a few minutes ago, estoy pintado ahora. I have makeup. Marta put makeup on me about an hour and a half ago uh, because I'm doing a television program for Televisión Española en La Dos. Every morning from 7.30 to 8 in the morning, I'm on TV. I'm on television. Yes, sir, I'm on television. And uh, just me. And I'm following El Método Baugen, El Libro del Alumno, El Libro del Profesor, translation booklet, the vocabulary booklet, etc., etc. And I'm going slowly through it. And uh, I'm offering the possibility to people who are watching to buy three books, to be able to follow me point by point, unit by unit, chapter by chapter, episode by episode, and it includes interesting people. These people, I'm going to show you these people today. If you're not familiar with these people, it means you're not familiar with El Metodo Logan, because these people are real people. Okay, but before I start, I'm going to say hello to Kirne. Oop, la he perdido. My real name is Enrique. I'm from Mexico, well, Enrique. Kirni, Enrique, it's a pleasure to have you. From Mexico, yes sir, in Rosso Bonito, Verano, Bonito Verano, eh? I think I have a problem with my connection. Good luck, Rosa. Rosa de Mayo, que haremos sin, que no podemos seguir sin ti. Come on. And Kirni, hi Richard, it's me again. Have a nice day, have a nice day, Enrique Kirni. All right, this is Philip Johnson. I'm going to introduce you to my friends who are part of my method. Uh, this is, this is uh, Philip Johnson. He's, he works in a bank. He lives in Lincoln, Nebraska with his wife, Nancy Johnson. And this is Nancy Johnson. I think it's like a typical American. In the middle of the West American, there's a lot of blood in Sangre, Noruega, Sueca, and Alemania. So I mean, Rubio's. This is Nancy Johnson. She's from Kansas. She's from a small town in Kansas called Coffeeville. La Villa del Café. Es un No, Coffeeville is um, coffee. Hay un apellido que se llama Mr. Coffee. E Y al final. Coffeeville. Ville. Coffeeville. Yes. Kublai Khan. Good afternoon, Mr. Vaughn. Good afternoon, everybody and everybody else. Is it true that if the Greeks had not beaten the Persians in 490? No veo lo demás, Marta. Tienes que un poquito más. At the Battle of Marathon, Western civilization would not have, no veo, would not have been the same. Uh, probably not true, uh, because we, yeah, we, we, you never know. If the Persians had defeated the Greeks at Marathon, uh, then, you see, the, the Persians fought against the Athenians in Marathon. Basically, they didn't fight against the Thebans, nor the Corinthians, and especially the, what was he say, the Spartans. Faltaban los Spartanos, Corintios, y los Tebas, Thebes. And so, they, Greek, Greece was very strong, and Athens was very strong. I think, in the end... Greece would have prevailed because Greece is very far from the heart of the Persian Empire. The heart of the Persian Empire, Imperio Persa, the heart of the Persian Empire is what is today Iran. And there were three cities, Susa, Ek Ekbatana, and um, Persepolis. And they are very, very far from Greece. So I think in the end, the Greek mentality, the Greek idea of freedom, the Greek restlessness in Ketud and the Greek intelligence would have prevailed. Abia 
habría prevalecido al final. Maybe longer, but it doesn't matter. The Persians lost at the Battle of Marathon. And then 10 years later, they lost in the Battle of Salamis, the Greek, the naval battle. Uh, but they and the Persians lost, and they lost at the Battle of... No me acuerdo. They won in the Battle of Thermopylae, Thermopylae, passing through, those three, the 300 Spartans. I'm trying to remember the name of the famous battle. The following spring, after defeating the uh, Persians in the Battle of Salamis, the naval battle, the following year, the Spartans and the Corinthians especially defeated what remained of Xerxes, Jerjes, Xerxes' army. But, interesting question. Thank you. Mercedes, good morning. Good morning. I hope you have a nice day. I hope you have a good day, too. All right. This is Nancy Johnson. She's Philip's wife. She's from Kansas, Coffeyville, Kansas, but she lives with her husband and her two children in Lincoln, Nebraska. Lincoln, Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. Yes, sir. Abraham Lincoln. So, and this is Michael Johnson. Yes, the same name as a very famous Olympic athlete. Michael Johnson. He's 14 years old, and he lives with his parents and his sister in Lincoln, Nebraska. Lincoln, Lincoln, Lincoln. Fíjate en la pronunciación de Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln, 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 con, con. conditional, Lincoln, conditional, Lincoln, Lincoln. So, he's a good kid. And this is Denise Johnson. She's 14. Oh, no, she's not. She's 11 years old, and she lives with her parents and her brother, and she's in her last year of primary school. Yes, she takes ballet lessons. Her two best friends are Ginny and Pamela, etc., etc. Here we have Pierre Monet. Parece un hombre aburrido, pero no es. This is Pierre Monet. He's a translator and interpreter. He works, he's French. He works in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs as a translator in very important translations. Very compromising, high top secret, classified information, and he translates. So he's a very important person in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for translating. Rafa Navas, good afternoon from Extrem Extremadura, con E mayúscula, por favor. Extremadura, punto. Have a nice day. Have a nice day too, Rafa, Mr. Navas. All right. Pachi, hello, Richard, Mr. Richard Vaughn from the French Basque Country. Wow. We're from Bayonne or from Biarritz, or from San Juan de Luz, San Juan de Luz, I don't know how to say it, San Juan de Luz, or from Indaya. Yeah, Indaya. Where are you from in the French Basque country? What area? All right, it's nice to have some money. Pachi from the French Basque country. It's not often I have the opportunity to meet people from the French Basque country. Well, this is Pierre Monet. He's from Paris. He's married. He has, I don't know how many children he has. I don't know how many children he has. But in any case, this, Marta, ¿la, ¿la pueden ver? Yeah? Because I can't see it. This is Inés García. What is her connection with Pierre Monet? Oh, see, if you take the course, look, if you're interested, go into, go into, write the following. In Google, in la línea de Google, entrada de datos, pones Vaughan, mi apellido, RTVE a la carta. Para latinoamericanos sería más o menos R, RT B chica E, porque no se dice V en Latinoamérica. RTVE, Radio Televisión Española, a la carta, pero con mi apellido de antes, presto, te vendrá mi, mi imagen. Y uno de los episodios de mi curso que va a durar mil episodios, tal vez. Pobre Marta, la tiene que grabar todas. <laughs> All right. Y esta mujer, esta sevillana, she's from Seville, Inés García. Her connection with François Monet is that she's going to have a traffic accident in Seville. She's going to have a traffic accident in Seville. And... Uh, She's going to have a traffic accident with Pierre's nephew, Sobrino, with Pierre's nephew. And Pierre's nephew is uh, Francois. 
Monet. All right, Francois Monet. And it's a very interesting story. Eh? Francois from Paris. Ines is from Seville. Como la opera Carmen. Eh? <laughs> Cuidado, las sevillanas son peligrosas. Yes, but Francois is an engineer. He's a chemical engineer. And because he's a chemical engineer, he needs to uh, travel to Huelva in southern Spain, in Andalusia, because Huelva is a very important city in Spain for the chemical industry, the chemical industry. So that's uh, Francois Monet. Marta me estás bailando por la... Marta me está llevando por el camino de amargura. All right. And this is Aki Morita. Ay, fresita. Here's Aki Morita. ¿Dónde estamos? Luis Enrique Pérez. Greetings from Stockholm. Wow. Esto es el colmo. Stockholm. It's pouring down. It's it pouring down rain. No pouring with rain. Okay. And Luis Enrique. It's pouring down rain at the moment here. But after the rain comes the sun. Here comes the sun. Ba -da 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 -da. Yes, sir. The sun will come. Does the sun really shine in Sweden? I didn't know the sun shine in, shone in Sweden. I never say the past tense of the shine. The sun shone yesterday. No se dice. The sun was shining yesterday. I didn't know the sun shines in, in, uh, in Sweden. Does it really? All right. It's raining cats and dogs now in Sweden. It's pouring down rain. All right. Marta, no veo ni más comentarios. Sé que hay más. Carolina con K, bello Morales. Greetings from Cracovia. Wow. Are you Spanish or Italian? Is it Carolina Bello or Bello? Uh, she's from Krak from Cracovia, Spanish, Cracovia. That's Cracovia is in the south of Poland, not too far from the border with Ukraine and the border with, Slova with Slovakia. All right. Rosso Bonito Verano. They were married. Who was married? Yeah. Yeah, these two. Are you talking about two of my people, Philip and Nancy? Yes, they're married. La -da -da -da. Yes, they're married. And Aki Morita's married too. Aki Morita's a quality engineer in Honda, Division Coches de Honda, no motos. He's in the car division of Honda, and he's the, the head of quality, quality control, quality assurance. And in the future, he's going to be sent by his company to the state of Louisiana, La América Super Profunda. Vamos. From Osaka. He lives in Osaka. He has a wife and two children. And we will follow. If you follow, if you follow in Baugan, RTVE a la carta, veréis el programa y podéis seguirlo con estos personajes incluidos. Here we have Luigi Barghini. No Bargini, Bargini. Luigi Bargini is an industrialist, un industrial. He's also an engineer, an industrial engineer. Well, a mechanical engineer. And he's rich. He's worth $50 million, probably. He's worth $50 million. Su patrimonio es de 50 millones de dólares. No está mal. He is worth, o sea, vale, to be worth. He's worth around $50 million. But he's a good man. He's a very good. He has, he owns and operates, se dice mucho así, posee y opera, o sea, tiene propiedad y, y gestiona, se dice, he owns and operates, se dice mucho en inglés, de esta manera, sí, fundó, tiene propiedad y opera, se dice, y gestiona, he owns and operates the second car seat manufacturer in Europe, segundo fabricante de, de asientos de coche de Europa, this man, to, and his daughter, tiene 27 añitos, she's only 27, Anna Barghini. But she's the general manager of the company. She's sharp. She's a sharp cookie. Es una galleta aguda, se dice en inglés. She's a sharp cookie. Hello, Alicia, Alicia Flamarique. Wow, ¿qué? Apido. Flamarique. Flamante flala, Flamarique. All right. With hoy, I'm learning a lot of English. Hoy que es, H-O-Y, hoy. With hoy, I'm, uh, E mayúscula, apóstrofe, M. I'm learning a lot of English con E mayúscula. Alicia, las mayúsculas. Pero no entiendo lo de hoy. Con, o sea, con 
con hoy estoy aprendiendo con el día de hoy. ¿Qué? Hoy. I, I don't know hoy. But in any case, I think I understand what you're saying. Daniela. Hello, Richard. No veo nada. Está. Sube un poco. No, baja un poco. Es que hay, un, hay una ventana tan pequeña. Hello, Richard. I'm cooking right now. Be careful. Yeah, women can multitask. Men cannot. No, los hombres no sabemos hacer multitarea. O sea, if I'm watching and I'm cooking, I'll cut my finger. I'll burn my hand, etc. So be careful. Daniela Karina. Yeah, she's cooking. Pachi. I live in Saint P. P. Sur Nivel. Near Saint Jean de Luz. And I've been following you for more than 10 years. Pobrecito, te acompaño el sentimiento. Wow. Uh, do you speak uh, Spanish well? The, the Most of the people, many of the people in the French Basque country speak Spanish very, very well. The vice versa, no. People in the Spanish Basque country don't speak French very well. Except people right on the border, perhaps. But it's a very beautiful area. These areas are just beautiful. The Basque country is beautiful. And it's interesting that there are many Basque people in the United States in Idaho and Nevada. And most of them are originally from the French Basque country, not from the Spanish Basque country. Because 150 years ago, it was necessary to import shepherds, importer pastores de ovejas. Because the United States at that time had the cattle industry was very developed. La industria del ganado vacuno, bovino, pero no el ganado ovino o lanar. <laughs> and so it was necessary to develop the sheep industry. And the areas of, of Nevada, Utah, and um, Idaho in the northwest of the United States was very, very good for sheep. But they didn't have shepherds. And they brought, they took to the United States a lot of Basques, including, especially from the French Basque country. I remember meeting, I was in, I don't remember, I was in a restaurant. And next to me at a different, in another table, there was a couple in their 70s or 80s, very old couple. And they heard me speaking Spanish and they spoke to me in Spanish. I think we were in France. I don't remember where, maybe in Paris. And they said, Usted habla español con acento. ¿De dónde es? I said, from the United States. I said, ah. He said, hemos vivido 25 or 30 años en Estados Unidos. And he spoke English quite well. And he was a shepherd, pastor, huh? in, in Nevada. Y de hecho, el, gober el gobernador de Nevada, uno de los gobernadores en los años 60, creo, tenía apellido vasco, como Iberreche o Echeverria, etc. Whatever. Alicia Flamarique, you are the best teacher of all time. Of all time. Es curioso porque en español se dice... Rafa Nadal es el mejor tenista de todos los tiempos, como si hubiera varios tiempos. En inglés, de todo, of all, de todo tiempo, de todo tiempo, decimos, of all time. He's the best tennis player of all time. Interesting debate. Maybe not, but it doesn't matter. He's fantastic. Alicia, in my I'm in my job. Ponme la apostrofe entre I'm, por favor. I'm in my job. Oh. That's Kakiando. She's, yeah, Alicia is not working. She's watching me in her job. Manu Montenegro, how are you? Richard, the washing machine is in. Gotta go. Oh, the washing machine has ended. The washing cycle. Sería el ciclo del secado, no? The centrifugado. Yeah, centrifugado. We call that the spin cycle. The wash cycle and the spin cycle. Ciclo de spin is dar vueltas. Centrifugado. And the dry cycle. Algunos tienen un ciclo de secado también. The dry cycle. So, Manu, enjoy your housework. Disfruto de tus quehaceres domésticos. Marga, how are you? Hi, Richard. Here in Uruguay, the, U, the, the V is V. I said, is it V in Uruguay? No lo sabía. I've learned something new today. Thank you so much, Marga. Maybe in Argentina too they say uve. Es que prefiero la palabra uve que be chica. Porque be suena igual que be. So they be chica, be grande, creo, dicen en México and otros sitios. In Peru, sí. 
En México dicen, ¿B de burro o B de Pancho Villa? Claro, pero las nuevas generaciones no recordarán Pancho Villa, quizás. Bueno, mexicanos sí. Aquí no. Now no. When I came to Spain in the 1970s and I was teaching English, to say, to, to teach the nationalities, of okay, case, Jorge Negreto, Greti, is he Mexican or Spanish? Ne Jorge Negrete is Spanish. Excuse me, is Mexican. And is, uh, was, is Cantinflas, porque viví en todos. Po, po, yo podía hablar en el presente. Porque cuando introduzco las nacionalidades, es cuando el verbo to be in presente. No puedo saltar al pasado todavía. So I need people who are living. And at that time, Jorge Negrete was alive. Cantinflas was alive. Uh, Miguel de Madrid. And uh, oh, I can't remember the names. And uh, Pancho Villa was dead. But I used Pancho Villa. And everybody knew Pancho Villa. Now, no. Pancho Villa. ¿Quién es Pancho Villa? All right. It's a pity. But Marga, thank you very much. Cede Uve in uh, Uruguay. I'm thank you. Alicia, I always, I follow always when I can. No, I always follow you. Pon always entre el sujeto y el verbo, excepto cuando el verbo es to be. Va después. Estoy siempre quejándome. O eh, Marta siempre se está quejando. Marta is always complaining. ¿A que sí? ¿Que no? Sí, no. Sí. Marta is always complaining. Entonces, si digo, Marta siempre se queja, en el presente simple, Marta always complains. Always by entering. Marta y complains. Ahora bien, si el verbo to be entra en la ecuación, justo después. Marta is always. Y es diferente. Marta siempre se queja del calor. Es una declaración de un hecho que conste. Ahora bien, si lo digo en el presente continuo, parece una opinión. Marta siempre se está quejando del color. Del calor. Pesadita. Ok. She's always complaining. All right, Alicia. Subamos un poquito con Kublai Khan. Come on, Marta. Go up, up, para. Is the oh, platea, of course. I couldn't remember. La batalla de platea is the one I could not remember. Yes, that took place the following spring after the Battle of Salamis. Uh, uh, very close to P El Pireo, Piraeus. In, it's very interesting. The, the, this was the second Persian-Greek war. Ten years later, with the son of Dario el Grande, Darius the Great, the son was Xerxes, in Spanish, de Kerges. And it was a battle of Platea. Thank you very much. Kublai. Kublai Khan. To what extent is Paul of Tarsus responsible? Uh, well, you've heard me. You've heard me a lot, Kublai. Paul of Tarsus. Pablo de Tarso. In English, we usually don't say, we don't say Paul of Tarsus. We say the Apostle Paul. Incluso si no eres religioso, si eres ateo. You say, the Apostle Paul. El Apostol Pablo. The Apostle Paul. Uh, yes, in my opinion, if Paul had died on the way to Damascus instead of converting... Christianity wouldn't exist today. Another, another something would exist, of course. Maybe something similar. Christianity would not exist because Paul, for me, was the person directly responsible for the successful planting, sembrado, planting of, of, a Christi of the Christian concept in the Greek world. And the early fathers of the church incorporated Greek elements into the new Christian concepts. Resurrection, la idea de la resurrección, was not a Jewish concept. Resurrection was a Greek concept from the Greek mystery religions. Religion is the misterio. And they, for 300 years before the beginning of Christianity, before the the life of Jesus of Nazareth, the concept of, of um, resurrection existed in the Greek mystery religions. Also, the idea of the conception, the Immaculate Conception, is quite interesting because if you read Greek mythology, la mitología griega, Zeus, Zeus, baja como cisne para copular, to copulate, with, para crear semidioses, demigods, like Achilles, for example. And often it was the form of a swan. 
And in Christianity, Mary is impregnated by a una paloma, if you remember, a dove. So it's, a, it's the same thing as un ave. It's a bird. There's very, a lot of similarities between. And so to make Paul, the Apostle Paul, and other fathers of the church needed to make Christianity palatable. Palatable, que significa palatable, means attractivo al paladar heleno griego, to make it palatable. It's very, very interesting, fascinating. Uh, but in any case, Kublai, thank you very much. My Lopez, I remember you. By the way, this is uh, Ana Barghini, Aprilio Lilo. This is Ana Barghini. And Ana is Luigi's daughter, and she runs the company. Elia, he's rich. They're rich. She's a very intelligent woman, huh? She's as sharp as a cookie. Yeah, she's a sharp cookie. And this is, oh, what's her name? Paula Eisenbach. She's German. She's from Munich, but right now she's studying at the University of Heidelberg. Heidelberg is a beautiful university town located on the Rhine, and that's where she lives and, and studies right now is in Heidelberg. Yeah, our good friend. My Lopez, hello, my Kublai. Does the Vaughn method support ataraxia? Well, I don't know what ataraxia is. Kublai, you're going to have to illuminate me on this. You're going to have to enlighten me on questions of ataraxia. I have no idea. Beatrice, Beatrice. Duran, good morning, teacher. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, Beatrice. My again, what what's your opinion about coronavirus? That's an interesting uh I think for well no 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 sounds but I know I I think um that I think the coronavirus escaped from a biological a Chinese biological laboratory. Because there is a biological, a laboratory for biological weapons, armas biologicas, in laboratorio in Hunan, in Huanghu. I can't remember the name of the city. I think it was an accident. And then it escaped. Now, every year, half a million people die because of gripe. La gripe B, or cualquier tipo de gripe, the flu. We say the flu. The influenza, influenza, is la gripe. In the United States, depending on the year, between 10,000 and 50,000 people die every year because of flu. The flu. Usually they are people who are old, or people who are very young, or people who are not strong for some reason. But still, Still significa aún así. Thousands and thousands of people die in the United States, in Spain, in Russia, and in Mexico or in Canada because of the flu. Now, about 2,000, 1,000 or 2,000 people have died because of this. We don't know yet how dangerous it is, but it is true that very few, a small percentage, maybe only 10% die because of this. And people in certain ages, in other ages, they don't. It's very interesting. Well, very interesting. It's very tragic. Uh, but I'm not afraid yet. But you never know. With pandemics, potential pandemics, you need to be careful. And so far, hasta ahora, the conatos de pandemia, the, the gripe A, the avi, no sé qué, aviar, gripe aviar, y todas esas cosas, we have been able to stop them in time. The last important pandemic was 103 years ago. 1917, 1918, la gripe española, the Spanish flu, which wasn't Spanish, por cierto, it wasn't Spanish. It, I think it started in Kansas, in the center of the United States. It was, it was a normal flu, la gripe, but it mutated at a certain moment, boom, and people were dying. More people died because of the Spanish flu in 1917 and 1918 than because of the First World War. So it was a very important pandemic. In Spain, arrasó. 
in the United States as well. Even in Alaska, pueblos in Alaska perdidos a los ojos de Dios. Ahí hubo muertes de, de esta gripe español, española, entre comillas. España tiene la, la culpa, no, en absoluto. Yeah. Pero pueblos, yo conozco un pueblo en, en la provincia de Segovia perdido que se llama Valle, Valle del Tabladillo. In 1918, half of the population died because of this. That's the dangerous thing about the coronavirus. We don't know. And the incubation period is very long. That's a problem. Son como 24 días, hasta 24 días de incubación. No sabes que lo tienes. And so in the meantime, you're with a 500 people. And you feel perfect. I'm not, I'm not sick. But you're c contaminating other people. So it's dangerous, probably more dangerous because of the long incubation period. Okay, my, that's my Lancer for the moment. Eh? Pachi, yes, okay. Yeah, these are Cloverdale's characters. Los personajes de Cloverdale, uh, antiguo nombre. Ahora el libro se llama Von World, pero es parte del curso que tienes en Televisión Española en la D, en la B, en la 2 de Televisión Española. Pero vas a, pones en Google, Vaughan, RTVE a la carta y ahí podéis ver todos los programas desde el primero y he hecho 69 programas pero están disponibles hasta ahora hasta el 25, número 25 creo All right. me pica ahí porque Marta me ha puesto polvos, etc. para lo de la tele ¿no? ¿Ya? me ha puesto uh, maquillaje ¿ya? y en la nariz All right. Where are we? Alan Al Ayala. Hola. Hello, Alan. How are you? Bueno, vamos. Is, this is Li Tong. He's Chinese. He's from China. <laughs> He's from Shanghai. He works in a factory. Fabrica, el único fabrica que queda de teléfonos fijos. <laughs> Alguien los tiene que fabrica. And he works in a fixed or landline telephone company. So, in Shanghai. He doesn't speak English. But at the end of the course, he will speak English very well. Y lo hace por cuenta. Autodiacto. Autodiacta. It's very interesting, the story of Lee Tong. All right. Sube. Let's go. More people. More people. Maria Catalina, pero no leo lo que dices. All right. Good afternoon from Melbourne. Wow. Melbourne, Australia. It's, it's an honor to have somebody from Melbourne with me. Thank you very much, Maria. Maria, I just met a girl named Maria, and suddenly I found how wonderful a sound can be. Yes. La canción dice, Maria, say it loud. Dilo en voz alta y toca música. Maria, say it loud and there's, there's music playing. Say it soft and it's almost like praying. Dice la... En voz muy estridente, pero parece que es música. ¡Maria! <laughs> y cuando dices, es casi como rezar. ¡Maria! All right, from Melbourne. Sanchis, Irene. How are you, Irene? Hi. The best method for my dyslexic son. Bueno, bueno. El mundo está lleno de adultos de gran éxito que fueron disléxicos. Lo superan y el esfuerzo para superar la dislexia dota de otras habilidades que los demás mortales no tenemos. Entonces, no te desesperes demasiado con la dislexia. Recuerda, el esfuerzo que tu hijo tiene que hacer para superar la dislexia le dotará de, de capa, una capacidad probablemente uh, muy interesante para ser feliz y de tener mucho éxito en el futuro. All right. Jordi, Balearic Islands. Hello, hello from Menorca. I remember you. This is Natasha Zarakovich. She's Russian. She's a chemist, and she works in the state lab for the approval or authorization of food and drugs. It's like the FDA in the United States, the Food and Drug Administration. You need the authority, you need the approval or the stamp of approval from the Food and Drug Administration before you can sell food or medicine in the United States. And Natasha, she's single. Hmm? Typical Russian, don't you see? Yes, but she's a very intelligent girl. Nunca ha viajado en Moscú en toda su vida. Pero nuestra historia irá hasta Escocia. Yeah. All right. Adolfo Díaz. Hello, Mr. Vaughn. Did you draw these? No, oh, these are not stunning. Stunning. Falta la N final. Antes de la G. Stunning pictures. No, I didn't draw them. 
I, uh, <laughs> I'm not a good artist of drawing. Eh? And so uh, I didn't draw these pictures. But these pictures in the Metal of Alvin, you see these and many more pictures of our people, of our good friends. For example, these pictures, La Familia de Luigi Barghini, you know, you have the whole family here. But this is Nigel Perkins. He's a private detective. Alan, how are you? Alan Ayala. ¿Cuál es lo correcto, teacher? He has no hair. He does not hair. No, no, no. He has no hair. He has no hair. Se diría probablemente he doesn't have any hair. La, la segunda opción no es correcta, Alan. Él no tiene pelo. Él, ese hombre, por ejemplo, él no tiene pelo. He do, lo más corriente es he doesn't have any hair. Bueno, si dice he's bald. Es calvo. <laughs> he's bald. Pero si quieres especificar que no tiene pelo, usando el palabra pelo, he doesn't have any hair. He doesn't have any hair. También se puede he hasn't got any hair. He, otra forma de decir no tiene. He hasn't got any hair. Or he has no hair. Fuzzy was he was a bear. Fuzzy was he had no hair. Fuzzy was he was a bear. Fuzzy was he had no hair. Fuzzy was he era un oso. Fuzzy was he no tenía pelo. Fuzzy was he was a bear. Was a. Fuzzy con doble Z, doble Z. Fuzzy, fuzzy, doble Z, Y. Wuzzy. W, igual, que era con W. Fuzzy was he was. Era un oso. Was a bear. Fuzzy was he had no hair. Okay, you can find this. It is fuzzy wuzzy con doble cent in cada palabra. Encontrarás la rima esta. All right, so coronavirus. My coronavirus. Lo has escrito mal o algo, si no, lo repite. Well, my Lopez, I already, I already explained. Sois dos en la foto, my. There are two of you. Yes. Maybe, maybe my sabe bilocación. Bilocación puede estar en dos sitios a la vez. Yes. My, all right, wow, now I see the picture better. Wow, those are two good-looking girls, my Lopez. Which one is you? Me da igual, los dos me valen. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe, catch a target by the toe. If you're holding, making pay $50 every day, my mother told me to pick this one. Claro, in Spanish, you say, pinto, pinto, gorgorito. In English, you say, eeny, meeny, miny, moe. Que no significa nada, esos son palabras. Eeny, miny, miny, mo, catch a tiger. Aprese un tigre. Por el dedo gordo del pie. Eeny, miny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by the toe. If he hollers, he, they was el, como si fuera un hombre. If he hollers, hollers, grita. If he hollers, make him pay $50 every day. O sea, si grita, haz que pague 50 dólares cada día. Entonces, mi madre me, me dijo que le eligiera este. All right. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by the toe. If he hollers, make him pay $50 every day. My mother told me to pick this one. To pick, to choose. Y si no quieres ese, añades una palabra más. My mother told me to pick this very one. <laughs> Seguro que Pinto Pinto tiene algo parecido, eh? Para que salga el que quieras. All right. This very one. Ese mismo, mismísimo. This very one. All right. Mariana Filgueira. Wow. Schwas. Wow. That's an interesting name. Schwasoni. Yeah, Schwasoni. Suena casi al con indio americano los Shoshonis. Hello, Richard. I'm preparing my lesson plan for my next class, which is at 1 o'clock. Well, you have 20 minutes, eh? 23 minutes, I think. All right. Good luck with your class, eh? Mariana. Mariana Pineda. That was a very famous play by Fer, Fer, Federico García Lorca. All right. Sobre la que hacía. Él, ella ahí hacía. La bandera. Yeah, Mariana Pineda. I can't remember the story. But in any case, Pilar, María Pilar Genoves. Hi, Mr. Vaughn. It's a pleasure to watch you. Watch you teaching class. As always. Como, como, como siempre. Thank you very much, Maria Pilar. It's a pleasure having you as well. All right, this is Nigel Perkins. He's English. He's a private detective. He owns a private detective agency specialized in investigating 
suspicious insurance operations. For example, if I decide to take out an insurance policy on my wife, a million dollar policy, y cubro a mi mujer por un millón de dólares. Wow. Si muere, yo... Y luego arreglo su muerte. All right. And I collect. The insurance company pays me because they cannot prove, no pueden probar, that I killed my wife or, or, or arranged the murder of my wife. But Nigel's company, the insurance company will contract the service of Nigel's investigative company and they will investigate me and they're very good <laughs> very very specialized and they will perhaps find that I organized the murder of my wife that's his company and it's the number one company in Great Britain for this he's rich <laughs> But uh, he's a very good private detective. And this is his son, Ronnie. Ronnie lives in Monte Carlo. Ronnie is niño descarriado un poco. Yeah. Irresponsible. Well, a bit irresponsible. He's a bit of a playboy. He lives on the French Riviera. He owns a company for renting yachts. Alquila yates. He rents yachts in Monte Carlo. And during the summer, he makes money. But during the winter, he... Says, Papa, Dad, can you send me some money? Because he spends he spends a lot of money. But we will follow this young man's life. Tiene salvación? Yes, is there salvation for Ronnie? Well, if you join me on my course, you can see. All right. Francisco Tomás García Alcántara. Falta la, el acento, creo. Hi. Hello, Don Francisco Tomás. Que falta el acento en Tomás, falta el acento en García. <laughs> wow. I, maybe he's writing from a different keyboard that's not a Spanish keyboard. You see, that's the problem. It'll be Francisco Tomás García Alcantara. All right, without the accents. But some people don't put accents. Just I'm a stickler for accents. Un maniático con acentos. Yes. Solo sé que estoy solo. The Royal Academy of the Language says that solo, como solamente, it doesn't need an accent anymore. Oh, yo lo he hecho de menos. I miss the accent on solo. Solo que si estoy solo, es lo único que sé. Sé tiene acento, lo único que sé. You know, people tell me, when you say, ay, me se cayó. And people tell me, Richard, no, no. Siempre se me. Siempre se me. Ay, me se olvidó. Richard. Me se olvidó. No, se me olvidó. Anda, siempre. O sea, nunca me se. No, no, nunca. Vale, vale. Oye esa canción. Sí, se me la letra. Y dicen, anda. Pues en ese caso, Richard, me se la letra. Ok. So there are some exceptions, eh? No, no se me la letra. No, no me se la letra. No, se me, no me se la letra porque... Se me olvidó. <laughs> wow. Y estos seis no tienen acento. Bueno, me sé, yes. Me sé la letra. Se tiene acento. Ah, oh, Spanish is difficult. All right. Will. Vil. Geraldo. Hello from the kingdom of Spain. El reino de España. The kingdom of Spain. I'm in Barcelona. I like your pink shirt. Pink shirt. Uh, he says I look handsome. Well, when I do television... I try to wear shirts that are not white because the background on my television is white with buildings. I'm going to Rascacielos. It's New York City behind me. Es una realidad virtual detrás. Es un croma. And so I, I'm wearing a pink shirt today. Why not? Why not pink? Skilled shift. That's interesting. Turno habilidoso. Good morning from Spain, Barcelona, Barna, Barcelona. Well, I have two people writing me seguidamente from Barcelona. Well, I love Barcelona. It's a beautiful city. I really like Barcelona. I like Madrid too. I like Madrid a little more. I mean, if Madrid is quality nine, Madrid is quality eight, uh, Barcelona is quality 8.5. Quality 10, what city is quality 10? 
Corpus Christi, Texas. Okay. But um, I like Barcelona. Barcelona makes a strong impact. Barcelona is more beautiful and more interesting and more and makes a greater impact the first time you visit it. Madrid doesn't. Madrid in the first... So Madrid is an acquired taste. Es un gusto adquirido. It takes time. You need to live here five years to begin to... Mm. And then Madrid is a wonderful city. After you, in my opinion, <laughs> it's an acquired taste. Barcelona is immediate. Wow, me encanta esta ciudad. I mean, the Ramblas. You know, the port. La zona, la, la playa de Barcelona. Montjuic. Yeah, Tibidabo arriba. La Rambla de Catalunya. No solo las Ramblas. La Paso de Gracia. Just in the Plaza de Catalunya. And many other places. El Sagrada Familia. El Barrio Gótico. El... A catedral. It's really, really nice. It's a beautiful city. All right. Let's go on. Will. Barna means Barcelona. Yes, yes, I know that. I've been around enough <laughs> to know that. Raquel, I'm glad. Quítame la de I heard. I'm glad to hear you again. Pero yo diría I'm glad to see you. Si me estás viendo, se dice sí. Si es por radio, I'm glad to hear you again. But not heard. A poner la de cambia esa pasado. Julio César Smith. That's a good one. Yeah, Julius Caesar Smith. Saludos desde México, con acento. Suena anticuado decir much obliged. Um, es una pregunta. Lo escuché a un nativo el otro día y sonó muy cool. <laughs> much obliged. Much obliged. Mi... ¿Cómo se dice en, en, en Portugal? ¿Morto ob obrigado? Mor mol ¿Molto obrigado? Es lo mismo. Es como en portugués. portugués. Molto. Molto. Con L. Es, suena italiano. Molto bello. Mo, no. Ah, es algo así. Molto obrigado. 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 Much obliged. It's exactly the same. It's cool. It's a relatively old term. Y es un término que se usa de usted. No tutean. Los que tutean no dicen much obliged. Y es un poco del siglo pasado o el anterior. Ahora bien, ¿lo puedes usar de forma figurada? De forma de, incluso con amigos, de uh, simplemente para impactar. Much obliged. Thank you very much. It's a beautiful expression. Much obliged. Much obliged. So thank you, Julio. It's interesting. Yeah, I use it sometimes. Much obliged, pero lo, lo, un poco de, de broma con alguien que aprecio mucho. Much obliged. Simplemente para no decir thank you todo el tiempo, cambio much obliged. Yeah? So, my curiosity, Fim, remember? Me has pillado ahí. My, es que no te sigo. <laughs> I understand curiosity and I understand remember, but I don't understand curiosity, Fim, remember. You'll have to clarify that a little bit. Sorry, my Marta Cerezo. What is better to say? As usual, as always, or as usual? Para decir como siempre, pues. Como siempre es as usual. Es que... Borra. <laughs> como siempre es as always. Como de costumbre es as usual. ¿Cuál es la diferencia entre como siempre y como de costumbre? Pues son muy parecidos, pero hay un pequeño, mat un pequeño matiz de diferencia. Pero, as always, pero vamos, son intercambiables. Bueno, well, estoy cansado como siempre. I'm tired as always. Estoy cansado como de costumbre. I'm tired as usual. It's the same, right? As always, as usual. As always parece más todavía que como de costumbre. Pero vamos, what's the difference? Marta, it doesn't matter. As always, as usual. Good morning, by the way. Good morning to you, Marta. Good morning, good morning. Bueno, ataraxia. Kublai. Ataraxia is the skill to move away from passions. A kind of abnegation. Well, Kublai, I've learned something new today. Yeah? And I'll drink to it. Cheers. The skill. Yo diría más que skill is the ability. In este caso... Skill is más técnico, uh, no. But ability is una habilidad, la capacidad para. Capacidad is ability. Skill is una destreza, más que una capacidad. Pero vamos, se solapan las dos palabras mucho. Ataraxia is the ability to move away from passions. 
Yes. Estoy apasionado. Quita, quita. No quiero apasionarme por esto. Acá hay una especie de abnegación. Ok. Yes. I like drinking wine. I drink too much wine. I drink half a bottle a day. I need to cut down a little bit, maybe to a third of a bottle a day. But abnegarme, no. Yes. No way. Come on, life. You have to enjoy life. I'm not going to stop drinking wine. So I, I'm not going to exercise ataraxia, Kublai. Danny Morales, good morning, Lima, Peru. Wow, Danny, 6.29. Bueno, I don't know. Oye, no más. No more uh, messages, please. Me quedan bastantes. No voy a terminar. No me gusta no terminar. I don't like not finishing my messages. So if you are tempted to write a message, Control your temptation, ataraxia. Move away from your passion of writing a, a message. Danny, good morning from Lima. Wow, Lima. Yes, San Isidro y... Ay, I always forget the names of the Miraflores. Are the two cheek areas. One basically for business, another for residential. And I've been there a lot. I've been to Lima four or five times. And I like it. I like Lima. I like Peru. I like the Peruvian people very, very much. All right, Danny, thank you very much. Skill shift, C, responde. You know, I don't remember the previous one was skill shift. Shannon, Shannon Winter. Okay, she's as sharp as a cookie is not an expression. Sharp as a tack, maybe. Well, hey, wait, it depends. In Texas, and Oklahoma. Yeah, I didn't say as sharp as a cookie. I made a mistake. She's a sharp cookie. She's a sharp cookie. Es una galleta aguda. She's a sharp cookie. Let me form that blur. As sharp as a cookie, no. As sharp as a tack, perhaps. As sharp as a... As sharp as... Maybe you're right. As sharp as a tack. But she's a sharp cookie. Yeah. Jose Angel. Hi, Richard. What's the difference between the pronunciation of he's and his? Fácil. Totally different. The Spanish ear cannot hear the difference. He, his. He, his. Be his, be his, sé su amigo, de él. Quiero que seas su amigo, de él. I want you to be his, to be his friend. I want you to be his friend, be his, be, be his, e he. Yo vivo, siempre, siempre digo, Figo, el jugador de fútbol, Figo, Luis Figo, ¿te acuerdas? Portugués. Figo, Vive en Vigo. Vigo es una ciudad en Galicia, en el noroeste de España. Figo vive en Vigo. Figo vive en Vigo. Ahora lo voy a decir con la I corte de his, su de él. Figo vive, vive en Vigo. Vigo. Vigo, Vigo. Se oye. Vigo. ¿Dónde está Vigo? Vivo en Vigo. Yo vivo en Vigo. Eso es la like corte inglesa, de his, su Vigo. He's, él está en Vigo, he's in Vigo. Su Vigo, his Vigo, his. Can you hear it? If you can't hear it, it's impossible. Spanish has eight vowel sounds. A, E, I, O, U, E, como Eibar. Aceite, aceite. O sea, A, E, I, O, U, E, aceite. Ay, como aer, aer, aeropuerto, y o, o, ourense, que es más gallego, portugués que español. Pero no hay más. En, en inglés hay 24 que yo recuerde. Y en francés 26 o algo. Entonces el, el oído español se desarrolla durante los primeros 20 años con ocho sílabas. Digo ocho vocales. Y entonces no oyen. Estas cosas. Es curioso. Es muy frustrante. He's his, he's his brother. Él es su hermano de él. He's not my brother. Um, he's his brother. He's not my brother. He's his. He's his. He's his. He's his. He's his. He's his. Okay. Good luck. No more, no more messages, please. No más mensajes porque se nos acaba el tiempo. 
Uh, okay. Jose Angel, thank you very much. Luis Enrique, has euthanasia been approved in Spain already? Has the law been passed? I don't know. No estoy siguiendo ese tema. Euthanasia. La eutanasia. No, no, no pares. No para. Curioso. La primera que oí la palabra eutanasia en inglés, en un reportaje de noticias, pensaba que hablaban de la juventud en Asia. Porque esa pronunciación es igual. Euthanasia. Euthanasia. euthanasia youth es juventud. En. En. <laughs> Asia. Asia. La juventud en Asia. Hay un problema con la juventud en Asia. I said, well, what's the problem with you, the youth in Asia? <laughs> youth in Asia is eutanasia. Sí, sí. Pronuncia igual. All right. Kublai, in addition to their... Boy, estamos con griegos hoy con Kublai. In addition to their gods, Greek philosophers appealed to reason and dialectics to try and explain worldly events. Yes, yes, yes. But really, the, most of the Greek philosophers were not really devoted followers of religion. But because religion was so important in the Greek world, and the, the myths, those mythos, the myth, Greek mythology is so in, important, in my opinion, that they fused it, no fusionaron, they merged it, they fused it to, to enhance, para realzar y fortalecer, to enhance their philosophical argumentation. It's very interesting. Greek mythology, incredible. It's incredible. If you haven't studied, you should, to become an expert in Greek mythology, you understand human nature. Entender la naturaleza humana. In Greek mythology, in entender la, la realidad de la vida. Greek mythology. My God. It's, it's, it's everything. Los hay que dicen que la historia post-griega es un nota de pie a lo que era la filosofía, teatro, literatura y filosofía griega. I don't agree. It's a bit of an exaggeration, but it's it's very it's fascinating. The Greek world was fascinating. America, 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 Mora Medina. Hi, I am from Peru, Peru, Peruviana. See, it's in English, Peruvian, no Peruana, Peruvian. Okay, thank you very much, America. Maria Gemma, hello from Santander, Santander. Peliroja, creo. Yeah. I think. Yeah, Marta, expande la, la foto si puedes. Ah, oh, yes. Yes. And I see a picture of her when she was a little girl. No es cambiado nada. Yes. Haven't changed at all. Yes, sir, Maria Gemma. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Ponce Alegre. Can you imagine? Señor, yo soy Ponce Alegre. <laughs> okay. Ponce de Leon. Ponce Alegre, Marianne. Psychosis, panic, and racism with the corona. Uh, it's too early to become... Warped. Listen, the news, no, 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 no mandes más mensajes, por favor. The news, las noticias, la, los medios de comunicación necesitan ganar nuestra atención y cuota de mercado, ya para periódicos, radio o para televisión. Y si la única noticia importante de hoy Voy a abrir la redacción. Voy a decirlo en español. Hoy, se, al abrir la redacción hoy a las 12, de, a la una de la mediodía aquí en España, la noticia del día es el feliz, la feliz llegada de todo el mundo a su trabajo, el inicio del día laborable sin sobresaltos, sin revoluciones, o las amas de casa ya están trabajando en casa, los niños están felizmente en el colegio aprendiendo y los demás están en sus lugares de trabajo produciendo para el Producto Interior Bruto de este país. Esa y solamente esa es la noticia del día. El día que en esa noticia cambie, ¿no? encomendemos los almas a Dios. El que hay un accidente de tráfico con dos muertes, pues trágico. Pero no nos afecta ni a mí ni a ti. Y no debemos que eso nos hunda la moral. La, el conato de un, de un posible virus, etc. Pues eso pasa todas las décadas. Pero no debemos preocuparnos por eso. Si llega a ser una pandemia a nivel mundial, como hace 103 años, la gripe española, pues sí. Debemos tomar precauciones. 
eso sí. Pero no debemos dejar que las noticias que inundan las, los medios, las televisiones, las ondas, nos hundan la moral pensando que el mundo va en declive. El mundo es cada década mejor. Cada década mejor. Hay la mitad de la pobreza que había hace 35 años. Hay más democracia y más justicia. Todavía endeble, pero hay más. La justicia es mil veces mejorable, pero es mucho mejor que hace 100 años. Hace 100 años no había ONGs. Solo en la India hay más de un millón de ONGs. En Rusia hay 300.000 ONGs, organizaciones, bueno, como fundaciones, tratando de ayudar. ¿Quién los financia? ¿Dónde viene todo el dinero para financiar un millón de ONGs solo en la India, país pobre por antonomasia o, bueno, en día está progresando muchísimo. Entonces, no hay motivo. Estoy de acuerdo con Ponce. Psicosis, panic and race. Bueno, racismo no lo sé, pero psicosis y pánico sí. Yes. Concerning uh, la corona, the coronavirus. Don't worry about it yet. All right. Ponce, thank you. Tere. Tere González. I'm from Tenerife. Hello, Tere. Tenerife. In the Canary Islands. Escuche cómo lo pronuncio. The Canary... No, no más... Mensajes, por favor. The Canary Islands. The Canary Islands. La S es muda, claro, en Island, con S, pero S al final. No olvides poner la S al final. Tengo, bueno, hasta estrangulo a alumnos con esto de pronunciar. Bien, este, me cuesta dos años de práctica diaria para que digan The Canary Islands. No ponen The delante. Luego dicen Canary, en vez de Canary. Y luego Iceland. No, Iceland es, es Islandia. Island, pero son varias islas, son siete creo. Islands, the Canary Islands, las islas perrunas, porque Canaria viene de canes, las islas de los canes, no de, viene de los pájaros, es isla de los canes, las islas canarias. Por lo visto cuando llegaron por vez primera ahí, pues había mucho perro, me supongo. Bueno, Islas Canarias, Islas Perrunas. All right. So, Terry, <laughs> thank you very much, Terry. So you're from Tenerife, or Tenerife, as people say. Maria Gemma, you are one of the best, Sube. You are one of the best teachers I have ever known. Well, thank you very much, Maria Gemma. Mohammed, ya está. Es el mismo Mohammed de las últimas veces. Dear Richard, thank you for the sweat you have invested nah. in Vaughn Radio. You went over and beyond your paycheck. <laughs> Fui más allá de mi paga mensual. In fact, there is no amount that can pay you back enough. Thank you, Mohammed. I appreciate it, but uh, the radio was fun. Yes, I invest in money, time, and effort in the radio, but it was fun. Me divertía y sigo divirtiéndome. I'm still having fun. I'm having a good time. I'm having fun. I'm enjoying it. No more messages, eh? Could you share the tongue twister? What, what tongue twister? You say, ¿podéis compartir con nosotros el trabalenguas por escrito? ¿Qué trabalenguas? ¿Qué he dicho yo? Ah, eso no es un tongue twister. Mi, <laughs> no sé cómo se escribe ini, mini, mini, mo. No, ini, mini. Yo creo que es, si pones, si, if you go to Google, y hay diferentes versiones de esto, ¿eh? a veces con negrito, que ya no es políticamente correcto, entonces se dice tigre. ¿eh? Ini, escríbelo así, e, e, n, e, e. O sea, dos es a cada lado de la n, prueba así, ini, mini, igual, pero con m, ini, mini, mini y latina. Ini, mini, mani, mo, m, o. Prueba así. Te saldrá. Catch a tiger by the toe. If he hollers, holler. Como collar, como collar, pero con h. Hollers, ah, dar alaridos. If he hollers, make him pay $50 every day. My mother told me to pick this one. Y verás probablemente 8, 10, 80 versiones diferentes. A mí me gusta la mía. Ok. Mar Garvia. O Garvia. No ha puesto el acento, entonces será Garvia. Y formación. Porque no he puesto la, el acento en el lado de formación. 
<laughs> Could you share the... Ah, no, this is for the tongue twister. Tongue twister, tongue twister. Yes, she sells seashells by the seashore. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. All right. América otra vez. Medina mora, mora Medina. Cuando uso not y no. Dios mío. Uh, it's impossible to explain properly in one minute or in one hour. Uh, not, not, va pegado un verbo para negar. I do not, I don't. He does not, he doesn't. I am not ready. Es como forma de negar, pero la palabra no. ¿Estás listo? No. Eso es ineo. No. Y cuando lo, lo contrario de any, bueno, lo contrario de no, no tengo pelo. I don't have any hair. I have no hair. Eneo. Pero de ahí me lo paso porque necesitaría una hora y media. All right. Y ni sé de Bien, tienes que sumergirte en el idioma leyendo, oyendo, para hacerte con el feeling de no y not. All right. Not. All right, I'm not ready yet. No, are you ready? No, coma. I'm not ready yet. All right. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Lander, Richard, ¿conoces Ocho Bells? Yeah. Sé que existe, I don't know it. I don't know it. He says you can learn Chinese, I think, in eight months. Well, I don't believe it. Well, if you go to if you go to Beijing and spend eight months immersed in with a Chinese family and no access to English or Spanish, in eight months you begin to develop a better ability. Saber un idioma es saber negociar de poder negociar un contrato en dicho idioma con nativos y traer con un contrato firmado. Uno no aprende un idioma, uno se hace con un dominio de los entornos de comunicación con dicho idioma, con nat gente nativa o no nativa. Yo tardé 3.000 horas en, en hacerme con este dominio del castellano. Entonces yo no creo que uno pueda en ocho meses hacerse con un dominio del chino. No conozco a nadie. Aquí que sea, bueno, conozco a un chico que se hizo con dominio del chino a lo, a lo largo de 5 o 6 años. Y tenía 15 años cuando empezó. So it's, it takes a long time to learn, to master a language, to learn cuatro palabritas, decir, tengo hambre, thank you very much, this is a table, that's one thing. But to be able to say, mira, si hubieras, si hubiéramos tratado ese tema ayer, podríamos haber avanzado, dilo en chino, así, man, can't do it. And to understand, to understand people from Manchuria, to understand people from Xiamen, to understand people from Shanghai, to understand people from Beijing, to understand people from uh, Wenzhou. Good luck. Good luck. All right. But I'm not familiar with Ocho Belts. Cynthia, Cynthia. Hi, Richard. The last show I, I asked you about the Yelts. You know, the, no te puedo ayudar. The thing is, I must do the Yelts because I want to study in Canada a technical degree. Uh, your academy can help me prepare the exam. I don't think so. Uh, Cynthia, uh, give me your email address and we will... Uh, uh, can you send to uh, Baugan? Send your email address. A través de grupobaugan.com y un mensaje que hemos hablado to you. Y vamos a ver si podemos I don't think I don't think we can help you. I don't think we can help you. And the ELTS, I don't think so. But in any case, write to my company or contact my company. Que has hablado con Richard Baldwin. I may see his dead in the run. But possibly it must. I see. <laughs> Maybe. All right, more Marta. Marta, more. Gemma, Maria Gemma, truco, semana antes que mes en seme. Ya lo sé. He oído eso. Semana antes que mes, seme. Se me había olvidado, pero me sé la letra. All right. William Antonio. Hi, Richard from Colombia. Wow. Thank you very much, William, for contacting. It's a pleasure to meet you. 
All right, skills have Alcantara con a, with an accent. With an accent. En inglés se dice con un acento. En Spanish es con acento. We say con un acento. With an accent. Y también cuando dices con I, con Y. O con M, con P. We say with a P. Con una P. Con una M. Mi apellido termina en una N. My last name ends in an M. En una N. En an M. Qué difícil es. My first name ends in a D. In a D. And it doesn't have an accent. O sea, no tiene acento. Pero fíjate que no, no tiene un accent. It doesn't have an accent. My first name ends in a D. And it doesn't have an accent. My last name starts with a V. And it doesn't have an accent either. Okay, William. Uh, Antonio, William, Antonio. Okay, you're following me from Colombia. Thank you so much. Mira, voy a leer tres comentarios más and then I have to stop because I have to go. I'm hungry. I have to go to lunch. Besides, tengo una comida de negocio. I have a business lunch today. But with interesting people. Sube un poco. No veo nada. Marta. Anto Arturo Rubio, enseña usted. Muy bien, señor Bowen. Thank you very much, Antonio. Thank you very much. Me puedes tutear si quieres. William Antonio, by Tunel Tuning App. Ah, bien. A través de una aplicación que se llama Tuning. No, I don't know that application. Lo voy a intentar mirar. Tuning. Tune in. Es una, I, es una I o es una L? Tune L-N o Tune I-N? Okay. I don't know. Marta, you see it? Lo, lo miraremos. Ponce. How, I love Barcelona. Me too. It's more visited than, than Barcelona. For its mass P.I. No, no, te, no te sigo bien, Ponce. Sí, sí. Me encanta Barcelona. Yo también. Es más visitada que Barcelona. Que Madrid será, creo yo. For its architecture. Yes, the architecture in Barcelona is, a, well, Gaudí, para empezar. Uh, but, um, but the uh, architecture in Barcelona is more creative, more artistic. Uh, Barcelona is more of a more artistic flavor. Although in Madrid you have better museums. Well, Barcelona has fantastic museums too, but you have the Prado, the Thyssen Museum, and of course the Reina Sofia, Sorolla, and well, you have many other museums. But Barcelona is a jewel. It's una joya, Barcelona. All right. Subamos. Let's go. Marta, more, 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 more. Beatriz Serrano Moya. Hi, I agree with you, Richard. Barcelona is amazing. Yes, sir. And so is Madrid. Skill shift. Yes. <laughs> molto. Ah, molto, molto obrigado. Obrigado in, in Portuguese. Much obliged. Ponce, Barcelona is more visited than Madrid. Ahí está. For its architecture. Architecture is con a... Pequeña, no es a mayúscula. And design. William Antonio, I love my mom. Oh, wow. Well, very good. I love my mother too, but my mother's not here anymore. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Vaughn. Thank you, William, for tuning in. I, we appreciate everything. We appreciate everything from you, not all from you. Everything, okay. Uh, we appreciate you very much, se dice. Julier Cermeño. Wow. Hola. Yo quiero aprender a hablar inglés. Uf, Dios mío. Seguro? Are you sure? Si partes de cero, vale la pena, pero es mucho trabajo. ¿eh? Y aprender a, a, a español, aprender italiano, cualquier idioma. Es cuesta arriba, pero es una cuesta preciosa si, si estás dispuesto a, a escalar. José Madrid, you're the best. No, you're the best, José. Not me. William Mara, Villian. William Araque, wow, deseo comprar sus cursos online. Hmm. Es muy difícil fuera de España por motivos de IVA. El valor, el impuesto sobre el valor añadido. It's very, very difficult. It's, com it's complicated. Complica la vida, la burocracia complica la vida de una manera que ya, dicen, mira, ya está bien. Solo vendemos en España. Nos amargan la vida con todo tipo de trabas burocráticas administrativas, etc. De, tenemos que dejar un depósito en el Ministerio de Hacienda o Asuntos Exteriores. Al final dice, mira, oh, forget it, forget it. El día que 
despidamos a todos los burócratas el día de hoy en el mundo. ¡Buah! Sí, habrá gente que se aprovecha. Los corruptos siempre estarán. Pero los no corruptos construirán imperios. Y los, no, los corruptos también. <risa> habrá dos tipos de imperio. All right. Let's see, Junior, wow, from, from Costa Rica, eres de Costa Rica, wow, I think you're the first person from Costa Rica. Okay, Marta, dos más. I'm sorry, I can't answer anymore. Okay, Laura Ocon, Richard, Siete Islas, seven, yes, Tenerife, Las Palmas, Fuerteventura, ¿cómo se llama el más famoso de todos? De, por la geula, por las... Géiseres. Ok, Gomera, Hierro. ¿No? La Palma. ¿Ah? La Palma. Tengo todos menos el más famoso por su paisaje. What's the most famous? ¿Dónde están los Géiseres? No, Tenerife, no. What's the name of the most famous island? Justo al norte de Fuerteventura. Come on. Es donde van la gente para ver los géiseres, you know, el agua que sube y muy volcánico. All right. I can't remember it. Con la edad uno va perdiendo facultades, incluida la memoria. Te pasan dos cosas cuando te haces más viejo, cuando eres viejo como yo. La primera es falta de memoria. Y, joder, es que no recuerdo el segundo, pero vamos, sé que existe. All right. All right. Raquel Toledo, no he estado con mi hija. Espera. ¿No? Te he perdido. No he estado con mi hija en 10 años. Tenía 4 años cuando nos separaron en Brazoria County, Texas. Su padre, cirujano plástico, la tiene retenida. Pues lo siento. Wow. Eso es un problema. Mixed marriages usually work very, very well. But occasionally we have this problem. I don't know. I don't know. She lives in Houston. I'm sorry about that, Raquel. That's a, that's a problem. Dios mío, no sé qué hacer en esto. Porque hay judicatura española, judicatura americana, el buen Dios mío, quita, qué, qué tragedia. Yeah. I'm really sorry, Raquel. I wish you the best with your daughter. Okay, let's continue, Marta. Marta, let's continue. Ah, Mar Garvia, es que Marta. Oh. <laughs> yes, lo tengo. No sé si lo que tienes, pero vamos, me alegro que lo tengas. Lorena, hello. Y ya está. I'm stopping. I have to stop here. All right, I'm sorry. When I say stop writing messages, I mean stop writing messages. I said it about 30 minutes ago. Okay, I have to go. Thank you very much. And it's a pleasure to meet you again, to see many of you again, to talk with you. Uh, study. Do your best. And be good. And I wish you all the best. Thank you. Bye-bye.